KPM. In Malaysia, snatch theft is reported as the most common crime and all of us are at risk. So here are the ways to avoid yourself from becoming the next victim. First, be alert and aware of the surroundings and keep a close eye on any moving vehicles, particularly motorcycles. Second, hold your handbag close to your body and in front of you. Third, walk with a group of people and avoid shortcuts and narrow passageway when walking alone. Fourth, do not wear expensive jewelries. Fifth, do not leave your handbags or mobile phones unattended on top of the table at public places. TV KPM. Hi everyone, welcome to Didek TV KPM and today you are watching Menengah Atas for Mata Pelajaran for the subject of English Form 5 and the topic is crime. That's right. So before that, let's welcome our teacher for today. Let's take a look at her profile. That's right, before we welcome today's teacher, I also want to welcome our sign language interpreter for today, which is teacher Zaimi from Putrajaya SMK, Putrajaya Precinct 18 1. Thank you so much, teacher Zaimi. And of course, our teacher for the day, teacher Mira from SMK Datuk Mustafa Sekinchan. Teacher, how are you, teacher? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. How do you do? I'm doing very fine as well. I am so excited to learn on today's topic, which is very interesting, which is crime. Yes. But before that, a classroom isn't complete without classmates. So, I would like to invite uh, Teacher Mira to introduce our classmates for today. Alright, thank you Chris. Okay. Alright, for the first student, we have Ashikin. Hi Ashikin. Hi Ashikin. Nice to meet you. Okay, then we have Nazifa there. Hello Nazifa. Hi Nazifa. Next, we have Farhana or Nana. Hello Nana. Hi Nana. And last but not least, we have Iza. And all of them are my students from SMK Datu Mustafa. Alright, and for today, they are my classmates as well, for today's class and as well as you watching at home. But I would like to ask you, teacher, what will we be learning today? Okay, for today's lesson, we are going to let the students practice their listening skills. So they are going to try to understand what speakers are saying. Okay. And they are going to try to communicate. As right. well, through listening. Alright, and what is the topic for today? Maybe you would like to share with us your slides? Okay, so the theme for today's topic is crime. Ooh, okay. So this is taken from English Download B1+, Plus, which is Form 5 English textbook. So the lesson comprises the main skill and complementary skill of listening. Listening, alright. Before I begin with the lesson today, I'm going to start with the learning objectives. By the end of the lesson, pupils will be able to identify the answer options in the narrative text and rule out the incorrect options due to inaccuracy. Pupils will also be able to identify the keywords in the question and options and listen to similar keywords to identify the correct answers in seven listening comprehension questions. Mm. Okay, now I will start with what to do for listening. Alright, for listening activity, usually we have the pre-listening first, which is what to do before listening. Okay. So before the listening, I would suggest the students to read all the questions and answer options carefully. Next, they will need to identify the keywords in the questions and answer options in order to help them to further understand the question and answer before they listen to the audio recording. So they can find the keywords, for example, the WH words, which are what, when, why, who, or where. Okay. All right, next, while listening. So for the first listening, the students are going to listen carefully and pay attention to the words related to the keywords. And then they're going to jot down these words or any other words that they think are important, which oh. is related to the question or answer options. All right. All right, so that is for the first listening. We have the second listening. So we do the second listening in order to find more clues or hints. 
and the students are going to catch up for any missing words or information from the first round of listening. So okay. this second listening uh, is aimed to help them in catching up or maybe just try to double check their answers. So teacher, is it recommended for the pupils to have a pen and paper with them as well yes. while they're listening? Uh, they can also jot down somewhere on their question paper. That's okay. no problem. Okay. And next we have post listening. So this is what to do after their listening. Before they submit their answers, they need to make sure all answer spaces are filled and they need to always double check their answers. Mm. For example, the spelling and maybe just double check the words or anything they missed. Okay. So that those were the pre-listening, while listening and post-listening yes. activities that students should do before yes. uh, any listening activity. Uh -huh. All right. All right. So if that's the case, I would, be, I would like to ask my friends watching at home as well as those on Google Meets, are we ready for today's lesson? If you're ready, give me a thumbs up. Hey, only, only Nazifa ready. Where's the rest? As you can, <laughs> okay, so everyone is ready. I'm ready as well. But first, teacher, we're going to take a short break. For those of you watching at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on Menengah Atas for Bahasa Inggris. Everyone, welcome back to Menengah Atas, where we are going to be focusing on Bahasa Inggris Tingkatan Lima on the topic for today, crime. And I'm here with Teacher Mira and as well as my classmates from SMK Dato Mustafa. Hi, give me a wave. All right, so uh, Teacher Mira, what will we be learning in this segment? Okay, so for this segment, uh, we are going to listen to the speakers. Okay, they are going to be six short audio recordings and the students are going to listen and try to understand what the speakers meant to say. Okay. And then they are going to choose which one is the correct answer. Alright. Alright. Okay, let's start with the first one. Okay, so the students are going to listen to these speakers and they are going to circle the correct answer. Okay, we are going to start with the first one. The woman thinks the man is being too harsh or not harsh enough. Aha, uh -huh. so for this one, why don't, we, why don't we let the audio roll? Okay, sure. Let's have a listen. Exercise 1. 1. He deserves the death penalty. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Alright, so for this, for this one, I'm going to show example first. Okay, so according to the audio, the woman Things that the man is being a little bit too harsh. Is it? Mm, mm. Okay. Too harsh. Yes. Yeah. A bit harsh. She say a bit harsh. So I think she meant that the man is being too harsh. Do you agree with me, Chris? Yes, I agree with you. Okay. So why don't we try to check the answer? Okay. Yes. yes. Correct answer. All I think right. that's quite easy. Yep. Okay. Now why don't we we let our students to try to answer the second questions. All, All right, right, can I have a volunteer? For second questions? Yeah. Okay, yes, we have Nana. All right, Nana. The man is or is it not certain that the criminal has been arrested? So let's listen to the audio first. Two. I'm sure he's been arrested. All right, Nana, so what do you think? Which one is the answer? Oh, Nana, can you unmute your mic? <laughs> yeah, you forgot to unmute. Okay. Okay, uh, okay Nana. I think the answer is... Uh, I think the answer is the man is certain that the criminal has been arrested. The man is certain that the criminal has been arrested. Hmm. Hmm, why don't we check the answer? So she said the man is certain that the criminal has been arrested. So let's see. Yes. yes. Well done, Nana. Well Thank done. you. Okay, let's go to the third question. All right, for the third question, can I have a volunteer? All right, yes, Ashikin. 
So Ashikin, why don't we listen to the audio first? Three. He must have been at least 1.8 meters tall. He must have been at least 1.8 meter tall. So he was 1.8 meter tall or more or less? Which one is the answer? At least 1.8 hmm. meter tall. I think the answer is he was 1.8 meter tall or more. Okay, so when they mention at least, the minimum must be 1.8 meter tall. Hmm. So tall or more. Let's double check the answer. Yes, well done, Shikin. Thank you. Next, for number four, can we have another volunteer? All right, Iza. Iza, for number four, the woman now feels calmer or more confused. Okay, let's listen to the audio. Four. Thanks for reassuring me. The word reassuring. So, which one do you think is the answer? The answer is the woman now feels calmer. Okay, mm. so the woman now feels calmer. So she's been reassured and she feels more calm. Well, let's see. Is it correct? Yes, well done, Isa. Well done. Next. All right, for number five, the man is sure or not sure that the girl is innocent. So why don't we ask for a volunteer? Yes, Nazifa. Let's listen to the audio first. Five. I have my doubts about her innocence. Okay, Nazifa. So which one do you think is the answer? I think the answer is the man is not sure that the girl is innocent. The man is not sure because he mentioned I have my doubts. Mm. So when he has doubts, it means that he is unsure. So let's see. Is it a correct one? Yes. Well done, Nazifa. Last but not least. Okay, we have number six. The man says the coat was definitely or possibly black. Mm, let me ask my new student here. Chris, what do you think? Oh, okay. Why don't we roll the audio first? Ken. Six. I think his coat was black, but I couldn't swear to it. Mm. All right, so okay. which one do you think is the answer? The man says the coat was possibly black. Possibly because black. Because he wasn't sure. Okay. So let's check the answer. So he thought that the coat was black, but mm. he couldn't swear to it. So let's see the answer. Yes. Well done, Chris. Thank you, teacher. Good job. All right. So now we are going to proceed to our next listening activity. Right. So for the second task of listening, we are going to listen again to the same audio and phrases. And then the students are going to identify the similar keywords from the audio to the phrases. Okay. We have a pair of sentences here. So they're going to read the first sentence and then find the similar keywords to the first sentence. Okay. And then they're going to use it to complete these alternative ways of saying sentences. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you the first example. Don't worry. All right. So for number one, that is too easy. Okay. So the hint here is to replace the phrase too easy. So why don't we let the audio roll first? Unit six, listening. Exercise one. One. He deserves the death penalty. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? That's a bit harsh. So the female speaker mentioned that's a bit harsh. Mm, hmm. I guess that can be replaced to that's too harsh. But the adjective here used is easy. easy. So I'm going to replace that's a bit easy, isn't it? Do you agree with me? Yeah. That's a bit easy. Mm -hmm. Let's check the answer. Well, mm. so I think that's the correct one. Okay, why don't we let the students to try? All right, for second question, can I have a volunteer? Yes, Shikin. Shikin, are you ready? Okay, so let's see question two. He must still be at school. So you're going to try to replace the word must. Okay, let's listen to the audio first. Two. 
I'm sure he's been arrested. All right, shake it. So what do you think is the answer? I think the answer is I'm sure he's still at school. All right, he must still be at school, so must can be replaced with sure. I am sure he is still at school. So let's see. Yes, quite correct. So here, I'm pretty sure that he's still at school. Well done, Shikin. Thank you. Now, let's proceed to question number three. So for question number three, we ran 50 meters or more. Okay, let's listen to the audio first. Three. He must have been at least 1.8 meters tall. At least 1.8 meter tall. And here we have 50 meters or more. All right. So why don't we ask our student? Okay, Isa. So what do you think is the answer? I think the answer is we ran at least 50 meters. We ran at least 50 meters. So at least 50 meters means that the minimum is 50 meters or more. So let's check. All mm. right, we ran at least 50 meters. Well done, Isa. Well Thank done, Isa. Thank you. Next, for question number four. I will speak to her and make her feel calmer. All right, okay. so let's listen to the audio. Four. Thanks for reassuring me. All right. So can we have another volunteer? Okay, Nazifa. So which one do you think is the similar keyword to make her feel calmer? I think the answer is I speak to her and reassure her. Okay, I will speak to her and reassure her. So when you use the word reassure, it can replace the phrase make her feel calmer. Let's check. All right, well done. Thank you, Nazifa. Well done. Yes. All right, next, for number five. Okay, for number five, I am not sure whether she can be trusted. Hmm, so let's listen to the audio. Five. I have my doubts about her innocence. Okay, so can we have a volunteer? All right. Nana, so what do you think is the answer? I have my doubts about whether she can be trusted. I have my doubts. So you are replacing the phrase not sure with I have my doubts. Mm, I have my doubts whether she can be trusted. Let's check. Yes. I have my doubts about whether she can be trusted. So that is certainly to replace the phrase not sure. Well done, Nana. Thank you. Last Te but not least. Teacher, can I ask for number five? Yes. Can we also say I doubt? whether she can be trusted yep okay that is also usable you can mention i doubt whether she can be trusted is the all right same. Uh -uh. okay for number six why don't we chris can i have you for question six sure teacher all right so i think the car was red but i am not certain okay. let's listen to the audio first six i think his coat was black but i couldn't swear to it all right. So how are we going to replace the phrase not certain? Teacher, <gasps> mm. can we repeat the audio? Sure, why not? Okay. Why don't we repeat the second listening? Sure. Six. I think his coat was black, but I couldn't swear to it. All okay. right. So what is your answer? So the hint is to replace the phrase of not certain. Yes. I think the car was red, but I couldn't swear to it. All right. Let's I see. think the car was red, but I couldn't swear to it. Mm, is that the phrase? See? That... Yes. yes. Well done, Chris. Phew. That's a good one. All right, Excellent. Thank you, teacher. All right, teacher. Could I? Um, could you also share with us like a, a summary on what we just did together in this segment? Alright, so for this one, the students uh, actually learn on how to identify the keywords from the question to the similar one in the audio recording. Mm. And they're going to use it to try to rephrase sentences into a new one. Alright, ah. and how did our pupils on Google Meets as well as those watching at home do for this activity? I think for this activity, they managed to do it well. So I give my five stars for them. 
Five well stars. Done. Five stars. Good job, everybody. And five stars for me as well? Yes, of course. You're my student as well. Yes. All right. So, uh, but without further ado, why don't we take a short break? Is that, a, is that all right, teacher? Yes, sure. Okay, for those watching at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with teacher Mira for Bahasa Inggris Tingkatan 5. Hi everyone, welcome back to Menengah Atas and you're watching with me Chris as your host and today we are focusing on Bahasa Inggris Tingkatan 5 on the topic of crime, focusing on listening and I'm here with teacher Mira as well as my classmates from SMK, Dato Mustafa and you watching at home. Alright teacher, so in this segment, what will we be doing next? Alright, so for this activity the students are going to listen to a longer audio recordings okay. and then they're going to try to determine what the speakers are saying okay. and then they're going to try to understand what the speaker means to deliver by through the use of our voice and tone used by the speaker mm. okay all right so for this one the student need to focus as this is the format of SPM question okay all right so for this activity, this type of task often requires the students to work out how someone feels about a situation or a person. They will probably say something connected to each of the answer options, so don't guess the answer too quickly. It can be partially true but not fully true. So All they right. need to listen completely. So students are going to listen carefully to the words and expressions they use to work out which of the answer option is actually correct. Okay. Okay. So let's start with the first one. So I'm going to show the example first. Okay, so the first question, you hear a police officer talking. So what does he think about modern policing? So from here we can see that the key word is they are talking about modern policing. Okay, so let's hear the audio first. One, you hear a police officer talking. I've been in the police force for 30 years and of course I've seen some big changes in that time. There have always been risks in the job and nowadays there are definitely more people carrying guns and knives than in the past. But we're better protected too with special clothing and equipment so I generally feel pretty safe. Computers have completely changed our job though. Without them we wouldn't solve half the crimes we solve now. And what's nice is that they've actually reduced the number of reports we have to write. So paperwork has thankfully decreased, leaving us more time to catch criminals. Mm-hmm. So, as what can be heard from the audio recording, so let's go through the answer options one by one. So for A, it is more dangerous than in the past. I think I catch something that mentioned it is more dangerous than the past, but then we have better protection. Mm. Okay, so I think this is partially true. Why don't we see the second answer? All right, for answer B, technology plays an important part. I think they mentioned something about computer really helps them. Mm. Okay, yep. so I think this is true. Computer is a part of technology. And then for answer C, paperwork takes too long. Do you think you catch that? Yes, I caught that earlier as well. But then, the paperwork, they say it helps to reduce their paperwork. So, this statement is false. Right. So, I will go with, I think I will go with answer B. Okay? B, alright. Answer B. Alright. So, why don't we try to listen to the second listening? Okay. To double check our answer. Okay, let's hear the audio. Exercise 3. 1. You hear a police officer talking. I've been in the police force for 30 years. And of course I've seen some big changes in that time. There have always been risks in the job. And nowadays there are definitely more people carrying guns and knives than in the past. But we're better protected too with special clothing and equipment. 
so I generally feel pretty safe. Computers have completely changed our job though. Without them, we wouldn't solve half the crimes we solve now. And what's nice is that they've actually reduced the number of reports we have to write. So paperwork has thankfully decreased, leaving us more time to catch criminals. All right. So as can be seen here, we can see that uh, for answer A, we are better protected. So it's definitely dangerous nowadays, but we are better protected. So that is partially too, true. For answer B, computers have completely changed our job. So it means that technology really helps them in doing their work. And for answer C, there is the keyword of reduce. So paperwork doesn't really take too long. So I think the answer is B. Computers mm. have completely changed our job though. Without them, we wouldn't solve half the crimes we solve now. Okay, right. so why do we check the answer? Okay. okay. Let's see whether it's right or wrong. Ah, yes, it is B. Okay, so that is how our students are going to identify the keywords first and then try to figure out the similar keywords or related to the questions okay. in order to find the correct answer, which is more accurate. All right, so let's proceed with the second questions. Okay, for the second question, you hear two people talking about an escaped criminal. So let's let the audio roll first. Two. You hear two people talking about an escaped criminal. Did you hear a criminal broke out of the prison near here the other day? Yes, I did, but they must have caught him and put him safely away again by now. I'm not sure about that. The police helicopter was out searching yesterday, which suggests he's still on the run. Do you know what he went to prison for? He could be dangerous. Well, I think most of the people in that prison are serving sentences for burglary, shoplifting, that kind of thing. I don't think they're too violent. Still, we should probably make sure we keep the doors and windows locked just in case until we hear they've caught him. Definitely. All right, so for question number two, can I have a volunteer to try to answer the question? Who would like to volunteer for question two? Oh, All right. Okay. Ashikin. So Ashikin, so which one do you think is the answer? What do they agree about? I think the answer is B because they should uh, be extra careful. Okay, they should be extra careful. So the keyword here, they are talking about escape criminal. All right. Okay, so as you can listen from the audio, for the first answer, which is answer A, the man is probably dangerous. Um, I think the man is saying that it could be dangerous, but they are caught for shoplifting, burglary, and things like that. So he's saying that it is not too violent. So maybe this is partially true. Okay, why don't we go to answer B? So they should be extra careful. So, uh, in the conversation, the man said that we need to keep our door lock, window lock and everything. So, yes, it is mentioned already over there that they should be extra careful. Why don't we go to answer C? So, the police have caught the man. Is it true, Ashikin? Is the police really caught the man? No. No, because the helicopter is still on search looking for the criminals. So, C, we can maybe rule out the C. This is wrong so we can eliminate c so now we have a and b and you answer b all right so why don't we check the answer okay let's hear for our second listening okay to double check the answer two you hear two people talking about an escaped criminal did you hear a criminal broke out of the prison near here the other day Yes, I did, but they must have caught him and put him safely away again by now. I'm not sure about that. The police helicopter was out searching yesterday, which suggests he's still on the run. Do you know what he went to prison for? He could be dangerous. Well, I think most of the people in that prison are serving sentences for burglary, shoplifting, that kind of thing. I don't think they're too violent. Still, we should probably make sure we keep the doors and windows locked just in case until we hear they've caught him. Definitely. Okay, so for question two, 
we can figure out that from the transcription the that the criminal is still on the run so that answers the question that the policeman still hasn't caught the man yet so answer C is already ruled out and then we have for answer A that the men think the criminal are not too violent because they are caught for maybe just light mm. offence and then we have for answer B we should probably make sure we keep the doors and windows locked so it is mentioned over there so we can see that maybe the correct one is for answer B okay so let's check our answer Okay, so here the man mentioned that they should be extra careful by keeping the windows and door locked. So I think the answer B uh, is 100% true compared to the other answer. Alright, well okay. done Ashikin. Thank you Ashikin. Now let's proceed to question 3. Okay, for question 3 you hear a young woman talking. So let's listen to the audio first. 3. You hear a young woman talking. When I was at school, I was always getting into trouble, usually for vandalism and shoplifting, but once for arson as well. I was too young to go to prison, so I had to do community service many times. I know I was difficult to put up with, and I'm not surprised nobody believed anything I said or trusted me with anything. The thing is though, I did my time and I learnt my lesson. I'm not like that anymore. I'm a better person and much happier for it, but people still don't trust me. They ought to give me a second chance, but they don't. Alright, so for question three, can I have a volunteer to try answer the question? Okay, Nazifa. Nazifa, can you please help me first to identify the keyword from the question? I heard that she... I heard on the radio that she said that she changed now, but people still treat her badly. Okay. So I think I could be C because she thinks people treat her unfairly. Okay, so the keyword over there, she told people that she already changed, but people don't accept. So maybe she's talking about the way she is treated. Okay, so that is the keyword from the question. And then you answer C. She thinks people treat her unfairly. Okay, why not the answer is A? What do you think about A? Is it mentioned in the audio? No, because she's the one who distrusts people. Okay, so she said that she deserves to be distrusted, but now she has changed. So she need to get different treatment. Mm. Okay, what about answer B? She's glad that people accept she has changed. Do people really accept her? No, no, because people doesn't trust her. Do you think so, Chris? Do you agree with her? Yes, yes. And, and that's why she's so? complaining in the audio. Uh -huh. So this one can be ruled out because it is totally inaccurate. And then we have C. She thinks people treat her unfairly. So this one we can hear clearly from the audio. Okay. So why don't we go for second listening just to double check our answer. Alright. Three. You hear a young woman talking. When I was at school, I was always getting into trouble, usually for vandalism and shoplifting, but once for arson as well. I was too young to go to prison, so I had to do community service many times. I know I was difficult to put up with, and I'm not surprised nobody believed anything I said or trusted me with anything. The thing is though, I did my time and I learnt my lesson. I'm not like that anymore. I'm a better person and much happier for it. But people still don't trust me. They ought to give me a second chance, but they don't. Alright, so for this one... Okay, hmm. so the highlighted point, I'm a better person and much happier for it. But people still don't trust me. They ought to give me a second chance, but they don't. So this is for... This is for answer. This is for answer... Wait. Okay, so this is for answer C. C. Yes. Okay. So people don't trust her anymore. Why don't we check for the answer? Okay. 
So I think that's the correct one because it's mentioned in the text clearly. So well done, Azifa. Well done, Azifa. Okay, okay, next. Let's go on to the fourth question. So for question number four, you hear two people talking about a crime. Okay, let's the, let hear the audio first. Okay. Four. You hear two people talking about a crime. You know that driver who drove onto the pavement and killed a woman and her baby? Yes, I remember. He was only sentenced to five years in prison. Can you believe it? He should have got a life sentence or the death penalty, if you ask me. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? I mean, it was awful, of course, but he didn't mean to kill them. I agree that five years is hardly adequate for causing the death of two innocent people, though. I'm sure they'll reconsider the sentence. I expect it will be increased to 15 or even 20 years, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly hope so. All right. So for question number four, can I have a volunteer? Any volunteer? All right, Nana. Nana, can you please uh, help me to identify the keyword first from the question? So from the question, what can you see? So what does the woman think about the sentence that was given? So which one do you think is the keyword? Oh, Nana, can you unmute your mic? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think I think she said the sentence will be considered because she didn't mean to see them. Okay, so it's about her. So the question is asking about the woman's opinion. Mm. Okay, so she's having conversation with a male speaker. All right. So let's see. What is your answer? I I think my answer is C. It will probably be changed. Okay. So the woman thinks that the sentence probably be changed. Why is it so? Why don't we hear second listening to okay. confirm? Four. You hear two people talking about a crime. You know that driver who drove onto the pavement and killed a woman and her baby? Yes, I remember. He was only sentenced to five years in prison. Can you believe it? He should have got a life sentence or the death penalty, if you ask me. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? I mean, it was awful, of course, but he didn't mean to kill them. I agree that five years is hardly adequate for causing the death of two innocent people, though. I'm sure they'll reconsider the sentence. I expect it will be increased to 15 or even 20 years, perhaps. Well, I certainly hope so. Okay, so from the transcription, we can see that the woman agreed that the sentence is hardly adequate for the offence. So she thinks that they will reconsider the sentence, maybe expand it or elongate it into up to 15 to 20 years. Okay, so let's see. Yes, that is the, that is the point. I'm sure they will reconsider the sentence. I expect it will be increased to 15 or even 20 years perhaps. So we can see from here that it will probably be changed. That is to be sure. Okay. For answer B, it was appropriate for the crime. I don't think she agree with that. She said that it was hardly adequate. It means that she disagree. So this is totally inaccurate. And for the first one, it was too harsh. Well, I think that one she talk about the sentence complained by the man. He yep. is saying that five years is not enough. They should be punished to death or maybe yep. uh, life prison. So she disagreed with that. So this one is not related to the text. So we can rule out this as well. So I think the answer will be C, totally. Well done, Shikin. Hey, well done, Nana. Thank you. Well done, Nana. All right. So the last one. Okay, for question five, you hear an old man telling a policewoman about a burglar. So let's hear the audio first. Five. You hear an old man telling a policewoman about a burglar. So, Mr. Jones, could you tell me what the burglar looked like? He must have been at least 1.8 meters tall. Definitely around 185, I'd say. He spoke to me as well, you know. 
I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was quite polite, actually. He told me that if I kept still and quiet, he wouldn't have to tie me up. Or perhaps he said he wouldn't have to kill me. I forget now. Anyway, I'm still here. Did he have any particular accent? I think he was from Liverpool, but I may be wrong about that. Perhaps he was from the Northwest, but I couldn't swear to it. All right, so can we have a volunteer to try to answer this question? Is there any volunteer? All right, Isa. Okay, Isa, so you hear an old man telling a policewoman about a burglar. So what is the old man sure about? So the keyword here is, what is the old man sure about? Well, we hear everything. I'm not sure. I don't know. I couldn't remember. So what is the one thing that he really remembers? What is your answer, Isa? I think the answer is A. A? The answer is A, the approximate height of the burglar. Okay, the approximate height of the burglar. So he mentioned that, okay, I heard that. Uh, but what about sentence B, the area the burglar came from? He mentioned something about Liverpool, but he couldn't be sure. Mm. And for answer C, the words the burglar said, well, he said something, but also she's, he said that he couldn't remember as well. So yeah. maybe this is partially true, and the answer C is also partially true. So let's go on with A first. And why don't we hear our second listening to double check? Five. You hear an old man telling a policewoman about a burglar. So, Mr. Jones, could you tell me what the burglar looked like? He must have been at least 1.8 metres tall. Definitely around 185, I'd say. He spoke to me as well, you know. I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was quite polite, actually. He told me that if I kept still and quiet, he wouldn't have to tie me up. Or perhaps he said he wouldn't have to kill me. I forget now. Anyway, I'm still here. Did he have any particular accent? I think he was from Liverpool, but I may be wrong about that. Perhaps he was from the Northwest, but I couldn't swear to it. Okay, so from the audio, we can hear that he mentioned the height of the old man okay that is the only thing that is definite the rest okay whatever he said and where he come from all are indefinite or he couldn't remember okay so i think the keyword here or the similar phrases is he must have been at least 1.8 meters tall which is definite so why don't we check the answers okay let's see so our answer is a well done isa thank you well done isa all right, and well done to all the other pupils who answered correctly as well. But teacher, we're going to take a short break. Is that all right? Yes. Okay, for those of you watching at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with teacher Mira for Bahasa Inggris Tingkatan Lima. Hi everyone, welcome back to Menengah Atas for Bahasa Inggris Tingkatan 5 with me, Chris MJ and Teacher Mira. Alright Teacher, I'm excited for our next uh, activity. What will we be doing next? Okay, for the next activity, we have a word game. <gasps> Ta-da! Okay. Okay, so for this word game, we are going to revise the vocabularies learned throughout the lesson. So for this activity, uh, the students are going to be shown a few coloured papers. Okay. Yeah, that one. And then they are going to pick one of their favourite colours. So the word given over there, they will need to match it with the definition. I will read out the definition and they are going to listen to me carefully. So if they got the correct definition, they are going to pop up their green card in order to agree. But Ooh. if they think that the definition read by me is wrong or it might not be the correct one, they are going to pop up the red card. Okay, okay. so everyone, you have your cards ready, yeah? Your green and red card. Show oh, okay. me your green and red card. Everyone is ready. Hey. 
All right. So okay. maybe uh, I would like to ask Nazifa. Nazifa, which color would you like to choose? Let's start with Nazifa. So which color? Just choose one color. Choose one color, Green, Nazifa. Green, pink, blue, or yellow? I want a green because it's my favorite color. Oh, okay, okay. Green, huh? Green, right? She said yes, green, okay. Green. All okay, right. what word is it? And uh, this is the word. Okay, so the word is arsonist. All right, Nazifa, I'm going to read out the definition. So I'm going to read out multiple definitions and you are going to identify which one is the correct one. So let's say I read out the first definition, but you disagree as it is not the correct one. Please raise up your red card. But if you think that's the correct answer, you need to raise up your green card. Do you understand? Okay. So the rest of you, I think the rest of you can join as yep. well. You have your card as well. So if you agree with the answers, just put up your green card. But if you disagree, just put up your red card. Is everyone ready? Show me a double thumbs up. Is everyone ready? What about you, Nana? Isa? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's start. Okay. Arsonist. I'm going to pick one. Okay. All right. So the first definition. Please listen carefully. Okay, arsonist is a person who takes something from a shop without paying for it. Hmm, do you think that is the correct definition? Can you please show me your cards? Teacher, can you repeat the All sentence? right. So, arsonist is a person who takes something from a shop without paying for it. Do you agree? Hmm, is that true or false? Is it a correct definition? Nana put up a green card. What about the rest of you? Okay, Nazifa agree as well. All right, Iza say it is false. What do you think, Chris? Is it a correct answer? I think it's false, teacher. It's false. Okay, let's go to the second definition. Okay. All right. Okay. So Iza answered correctly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good job. Okay. So arsonist is a person who goes onto someone's land without permission. So do you think this is a correct definition? True or false? Arsonist is a person who goes onto someone's land without permission. Do you think it is correct? Can you show me your cards? Green or red? Okay, Isa is like red. She's like, oh, <laughs> let me see my friend's answer first. Okay, red, red. <laughs> Should I repeat? Should I repeat? Yeah, one more time. All right. Arsonist is a person who goes onto someone's land without permission. Red or green? Red or green? Mm, without permission. Okay, one, two, three. Everyone, please. Okay, so Nazifa put up a red. Uh, Nana put up a green. And Iza okay. also put up a red. So I think one star for Nazifa and one star for Iza. The answer is wrong. Okay, mm. let's go to the third definition. Okay, are you ready? Okay, so arsonist is a person who starts a fire on purpose and illegally. So do you think this is the correct definition? Arsonist is a person who starts a fire on purpose and illegally. Ooh, starts a fire on purpose. Yes. Okay. So, so is, is it that the correct true or one? false? Red or green? Is this a correct definition for arsonist? Show me your paper, red or green? Okay, Iza is showing green. Nazifa is showing both. 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> Nazifa. Nazifa, choose one colour only, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, Nazifa so shows red. red. Okay, so two green, one red. Yes. So what do you think, Chris? Is this the correct answer? Yes, this is the correct definition. Yes. Arsonist is actually a person who start a fire on purpose. Ah. So one star for Iza and one star for Natasha. Alright, well, well, well done, done. everyone. Okay. All right. So can we, can we have another color? Yes. Okay. okay. Nana. Let's have yes. Nana, what color do you want? Yellow is it? Because that's the color of your room. No. <laughs> what, <laughs> what what color would you like to choose? Nana, what color do you choose? Pick one color. Pick one color. Oh. You want blue, pink, or yellow? I think she mentioned pink. Oh, uh, Nana, your mic still un uh, it's on, still on mute. Uh... Okay, never mind. What about Is Isa? Okay, never mind. I'll choose yellow because ah. her, her background is yellow as okay. well. Okay. All right. All right. And the word is. Ooh. The word is murderer. Can you see the word murderer? 
All right, I'm going to read out the first definition. Are you ready? Okay, a murderer is a person who kills another person on purpose and illegally. Do you agree? Show me your red or your blue. Eh, sorry, show me your, your, red gre or your green. Red or green. So, red or green. Can you repeat the sentence, teacher? A murderer is a person who kills another person on purpose or illegally. So, red mm. or green. Okay, looks like our... Looks like our pupils are having some sort of technical error, but it's okay. Teacher, can I try to answer? Yes. Why okay. don't you try? I you don't have, have your green and red. I don't have a. Okay, I have a green. Yeah. And a green paper here, but okay, I Chris. think this is my answer. Ah. It's green. So a murderer is a person who kills another person on purpose and illegally. Yes. One star for you, Chris. Well done. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. All right, teacher. Could you share with us uh, a summary on what we all learned today for today's lesson? Okay. All right. So basically for today's lesson, we have learned to listen familiarly to English audio recordings. As you know, students here, they rarely listen to English audio recordings except for English music or English songs. So we are trying to inculcate the culture of listening to English audio. Mm. And then the students also uh, were able to evaluate the tone and voice of the speaker to show empathy. So they can understand the emotion or the information delivered by the speaker through the voice or tone used by the speaker. And last but not least, they also listen to understand and evaluate the speaker's viewpoint and the reason for such perspective. Mm. So when they listen to communicate, they are able to understand what the speaker is trying to say and then come up with the uh, perspective to respect the speaker's opinion. Right. And, and how did our friends on Google Meets as well as those watching at home and myself as well do for today's lesson, teacher? I think they did their best today. They tried to listen attentively and then they communicate well and then they try to answer correctly. So overall, five stars for five our students stars. and you. Well done. I should get five stars. Yes. yes. Thank well you so done, much, Chris. teacher, for the stars. And also, for those of you, for those of us watching at home and mm. uh, for those of us who want to get more material and extra material for today's topic, where can they find this material, teacher? All right. So for, uh, for the lesson today, the viewers at home and the students can find all the materials at Sumbaku. Okay, Sumbaku. So for those of you watching, if you want to get extra material, like what Teacher Mira says, you can access Sumbaku. And with that, I want to wish thank you so much, Teacher Mira, for today's engaging thank class. You. Very attentive. My listening has definitely improved. And for those of you watching at home, thanks for joining us. We will see you next time only on Dide TV KPM. Bye bye. I feel like my ears.